Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca. Let's talk about makeup. So I am here to update you on my That's Expensive Project Pan. This was a project created by Misty from Misty Pans as a way to help us get more use out of our nice things. This is a Fantastic Ladies collab. I will link Misty and the Fantastic Ladies Facebook group down below along with any other information that you need to jump on board and have fun with this project. So I filmed my intro to this project a couple of months ago now. So it was at the beginning of April. And so I figured it was time for an update. The way that I am approaching this project is not necessarily super focused on the dollar value of the product or the amount of money that I personally spent on it, despite the, <laughs> despite the name of the project. What I wanted to do was focus on the higher end or luxury makeup that really makes me feel super special and kind of fancy when I use it. And it just, enjoy that feeling. So in my intro, I pulled a full face of my higher end makeup that really gives me that special feeling. And I really enjoyed that approach. Um, I did everything randomly last time, and I think I'm going to do it a little bit differently this month, simply because there are a few specific products that I'm itching to use. So we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. I'm not going to be rolling everything out, but there are a few things I will be rolling out. I'm just going to go over uh, how I did on each of these products and where they're at now. And then we'll talk about the ones that I want to roll out and the new products I would like to bring in. So first of all, for my foundation, I rolled in my Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Moisturizing Makeup. Uh, this is a really, really lovely foundation that uh, I don't get enough use out of. I went ahead and I used it. Let's see, I used it 10 times. It came into the project at 41 grams and it is leaving the project. I'm gonna go ahead and roll it out after that 10 uses and it is at 39.07 grams. So I used about a gram, uh, about two grams of this prod product, which I think is actually pretty darn good. So I'm pleased with the progress on that foundation. So for my eyeshadow palette, I randomly chose my Pat McGrath quad in the shade Eternal Eden. This is what it looks like here. This is such a pretty palette. I'm going to go ahead and swatch for you because why not? It's part of the fun. This is my newest Pat McGrath uh, acquisition and I was very excited to get some use out of it. I used it. Let's see how many times did I use it? I used it nine times and this is what she looks like. That bright pink there is so fun. It's such a fun color. And I also really love this kind of pinky gold shimmer that's there. It's a very pink look. <laughs> if you're not into pink, you would not love this, but I am into pink and so I do love it. This is the shade called Forbidden Fruit. I used that four times. That's the kind of darker mauvey shimmer there. Then this dusty, mauve matte right there is called earthly delight and i used that six times this is a really lovely shade because if you're not wanting to go super pink or super dramatic this just through the crease is a really soft wash is a lovely easy makeup look then this shade here is called temptation it's that bright pink matte so pretty this also buffs out very softly on the eyelid or obviously you can pack it to full opacity i really do feel that pat mcgrath's eyeshadows have just an enormous amount of versatility i've gotten some really soft soft subtle looks out of this and i've gotten some real full-on looks as well this last one here, which is probably my favorite shade in the whole, I, I don't know if you're really catching how pretty that shimmer is. It's just, it's got that duochrome pink gold. Oh, it's just delicious. I really love this one all over the lid. It's called a Pink Mystique. And I used this one six times. So did I say how many times I used this one? I used this one four times. So four uses six uses, four uses, and six uses. I don't feel like there's any real visible progress, which is not unusual for a Pat McGrath uh, palette. It's really hard to make a dent in these shadows. They're extraordinarily pigmented and pressed pretty firmly. Um, it's not difficult to get them onto your brush, but it is difficult to get to the point where you feel like you're making any visible progress. So I'm not surprised that this kind of looks pretty much the same as when it went in. Anyway, I really had a lot of fun with this. I did feel like, because I also have my uh, Pat McGrath Sunlit Seduction Mothership palette in another project, 
I kind of feel like I was getting a little bit tapped out on the purples and the pinks, which I mean, you can't tell from today. I'm using my um, Orchid You Not palette for my Color Pound project. <laughs> so obviously I'm wearing some purple again, but I am feeling a little bit pinked out, if that makes sense. So I am ready to roll this one out after nine uses. And I, I feel I feel good about this. And then I went ahead and rolled in a face palette. I'm also using, I have a lot of really beautiful face palettes and I'm using this product project as a way to get a little bit more use out of those face palettes. And then I'm using my singles to kind of fill in the gaps. So the face palette that I rolled this time was the Natasha My Dream Trio. I've already had this in a project this year. I think it was in my deck of panning earlier. I actually didn't get a ton more use out of this one simply because I had some other cheek products that I was really focusing pretty hard on, on in other projects. So I only actually got let's see, six uses out of this palette. Um, she is really, really pretty palette. I am so pleased that she is in my collection. This is the blush in the shade Cream Blush. Natasha is very functional about the names of her shades. So this is Cream Blush and I used this one four times. Then this one is called Glow Cream Base and this is the Cream Highlighter. Very, very pretty. And I used that one four times. And then this is the powder highlighter. It's called, what is this thing called? What is it called? Dream Glow. <laughs> this is Dream Glow. And I used this one five times. So four uses, four uses, four uses, and five uses. Really, really pretty palette. Again, after six uses, we're not seeing a whole lot of visible product progress, but that's not uncommon with Natasha Denona products either. So after rolling in that face palette, I kind of filled in the gaps and for bronzer slash contour, I rolled in my Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood contour wand. This is a really, really beautiful contour wand. I do find that during the summertime, I, I need to layer it up a little bit in order to get the depth of color that I want. However, it is really, really beautiful. And while last year, I do think I was favoring my Anastasia Beverly Hills cream contour stick a little bit more. I, I do see the, the benefit of having something that is a little bit more sheer, a little bit more easily blendable, something that I can, something that I can apply over a really light face of makeup and not have to worry too much about it being too much. You know what I'm saying? So I actually really enjoyed this. I used this 13 times. The funny thing is when I was talking about this in my inventory series, I decided that maybe it wasn't my favorite, but I don't know. Using it in this project has kind of made me fall in love with it all over again. It came into the project at 15.21 grams and it is sitting at 13.39 grams. So that is a fair amount of use. I'm happy with the use that I've gotten from this and I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a ton of other uh, contour products and I just am enjoying this so much. I think I'm going to keep it in. I, I got a ton of uses on it, but I, I think I'm going to go ahead and keep this one in and I think I'm going to keep it in to finish. I'm enjoying it so much. There's no point in rolling it out. Then I rolled in my NARS translucent crystal light reflecting setting powder. I just have a little mini here. I bought this at the same time as I bought the, the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush. I have a little mini of that as well. I wanted to compare the two. I find them very comparable personally. Um, this is a very firmly pressed powder. You don't pick up a whole lot of it when you're going in. And because of that, I don't think there's any visible progress here. I only, <laughs> I, I actually only use this five times. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I kept forgetting that I was supposed to use it and reaching for my one size because it had become such a habit for me to reach for my one size uh, loose powder. So I kind of forgot about this one a little bit and I have only used it five times. Uh, it came into the project at 29.78 grams and it is uh, rolling out at 29.65 grams after five uses. It is a beautiful, very, very lightweight and almost invisible powder on the skin. I don't feel like it's necessarily something that's going to stand up to my T-zone in the summertime. <laughs> But I am glad that I was able to get a little bit of use on this one. I do have a few other powders that I would like to get some use on as well. So I think I'm going to go ahead and roll this one out after five uses. Then 
I rolled in, this is my Huda Beauty Concealer. This is in the shade uh, 2.7N Coconut Flakes. This is just, this is my favorite concealer. It is, she's just beautiful. This is a beautiful, beautiful concealer. During the summertime, she does get a little bit more on the highlighty side than I prefer in a concealer. I also tend to use less concealer in the summertime. However, I managed to get, let's see, 24 uses out of this over the last couple of months. That is a decent number of uses. It came into the project at 28.18 grams and it is currently at 27.40 grams. I think I'm gonna go ahead and roll this out. I will probably continue to use it simply because it is something I wanna finish this year if possible. This feels like it's the never ending concealer. I've been using, I have been using the heck out of this concealer for over a year and I still, the packaging is opaque. I can't see where I'm at, but she doesn't seem to be running on empty yet. So I don't know how long, <laughs> How long it's going to take me to get to the bottom of this bottle but I do have some other concealers that I feel like are a little bit more appropriate for my skin tone at this time of year so I think I'm going to go ahead and roll her out for now and um and roll something else in for lipstick I rolled in my Natasha Denona uh, liquid lipstick in the shade bare I didn't get a ton of uses on this one because by the time I'd rolled it in spring was springing and this one just was a little bit darker than what I wanted to use. So I did not reach for it often. Let's see, I'm gonna swatch it right here. She actually dries down a fair bit darker than this even. And so it just, it's just not something that I found myself reaching for during the spring months when I just wanted something a little bit lighter, a little bit fresher. So I ended up only using this four times. It weighed in at 30.45 grams and is going out at 30.34 grams. So I didn't use a ton of this product. Um, but yeah, I just don't feel like it's seasonally appropriate for me right now. I'm not wearing a whole lot of liquid lipsticks in general, especially through the warmer months. I kind of move more toward creamy, balmy products. So yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead, even though we only got four uses on this one, I'm going to go ahead and roll this one out and we will replace it with another product. And those are all the products that I have been working on in this project. It is time to roll a few new ones. There are a few things that we are going to randomize. At this point, I would randomize a face palette or an eyeshadow palette, but listen, I just bought a new face palette that has eyeshadows in it that I am dying to use. And it absolutely fits the bill of something that makes me feel all fancy, okay? So this is my newest makeup acquisition, the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette. Look at her, is she not beautiful? Look at that. And I feel like this is just such a summer vibe for me. I feel like this is soft, easy, summertime bronzy makeup I just oh that look it looks so delicious and it looks so attractive to me this time of year especially I always say that I'm not a hugely seasonal makeup wearer and I absolutely would wear this in the winter as well and probably will however I don't know it's just really speaking to me right now a lot more than for instance what I'm wearing on my face today I mean I love I do really enjoy how this eyeshadow look came out but the this is definitely more lying along the lines of what I'm gravitating to uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So I am going to, instead of randomizing my eyeshadow or face palette, I'm just gonna go ahead and roll her in so I can get some uses on her. I think I've used her about three times since picking her up. And yeah, I'm just, I'm super excited to get a little more use out of this face palette. So this is by no means a new palette, but I'm gonna go ahead and swatch for you anyway, just <laughs> for my benefit, because I'm so excited about this palette. Um, and Tasha Denona and her very, very functional shade names. We've got Smoke, Outer Corner, Crease, and Transition here. This is Smoke, Outer Corner, Crease, and Transition. Oh my goodness, that's just bronze, bronzy deliciousness right there. And then the last one here is Inner Corner so smooth and delicious and then the face products this is cream blush and this is dream glow the highlighter and this one buffs out really really nicely just really really natasha knows what she's doing i'm super excited to get this on my face a little bit more all right 
So now we need to fill in the gaps with some other products. We've already got a contour slash bronzer. Listen, I know bronzer isn't contour, contour isn't bronzer, but I do feel like this, uh, this particular shade is on my skin tone is flexible enough that I don't necessarily need to wear both. So let's go ahead and pick a foundation. I'm going to go ahead and spin the wheel for this one. I do have a new foundation and while I'm really enjoying it, I don't know if it 100% fits the bill as something that really makes me feel fancy and special. So we're going to go ahead and spin the wheel on a foundation. <laughs> Dior Backstage. That is a pretty good pick. I'm excited about that. I haven't actually picked up my Dior Backstage in a little while, and it is absolutely one of my favorite foundations of all time. It is super lightweight on the skin. You can wear it incredibly sheer. You can build it up for a little bit more coverage. It wears for a long time. It is super flattering on the skin. I'm really excited about getting to wear that a little bit more this summer. Okay, so we've got a foundation. Let's go ahead and roll for a concealer. House Labs Triclone. All right, this is the other one that I have been using interchangeably with the Huda Beauty over the last few months. This one definitely is a little bit more appropriate for my summer skin tone than the Huda Beauty. It's a little bit less of a highlighting shade for me at this time of year. So yeah, I'm excited to get some more use out of that one. All right, let's go ahead and spin for a powder. Laura Mercier Soft Blurring Powder. All right, this is actually a good one for me too because uh, this one is a little bit on the dark side for me in the winter time. And so this is the perfect time to get a little bit of use out of that. Last, let's go ahead and spin for a new lip product. Pat McGrath Negligee. This is one of her more creamy lipsticks, so I think it'll be a little bit more seasonally appropriate than the Natasha Nona Bear. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rest of those and we'll take a look at them. So here's the Pat McGrath Satin Allure Lipstick. This was a Bridgerton collab. It is in the shade Negligee. It is this really pretty, slightly warm toned, rosy nude color. Isn't that just... She is so pretty. I do feel like uh, when I'm at my playlist in the wintertime and when more of the green in my olive undertone is coming out, I do feel like this leans a little bit warm, but as you can see against my summer skin tone, she doesn't look too warm at all. Look at that. That is just, those complement each other very, very well. Okay, so my Dior Backstage face and body foundation. I have this in the shade 2.5N. Uh, in the depths of summer, when I'm at my deepest, I may need to deepen this up just a little bit, but I have no problem with that. This is my House Labs Triclone Concealer. Then I have my Laura Mercier. This is my Secret Blurring Powder in the shade 2. You can see <laughs> she's kind of warm. Uh, but it, it looks a little bit warmer and deeper in the pan than she reads actually on the skin. So. I don't know if you can even, can you see that? There we go. It blends in pretty well with my summer skin tone, so I don't think I'll have a problem using this. And that is it. That is my face for the next couple of months. I think I will go ahead and check in with you again in around August to let you know how I've gotten on with these products. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.